about barbecue. Let me just start with the killer fight in barbecue. Do you believe in the tomato, the ketchup base, brown sugar, or do you believe in the straight vinegar? The North Carolina crew, they are straight vinegar and salt and pepper, and they think it's an outrage to do anything else. But then you've got the uh, Georgia, Texas crew, and I mean, now there are hundreds of types of barbecues. There are all sorts of shades of this and that and the other. But these are the two big killer categories. My mother made the best barbecue sauce anywhere. I know everybody thinks they do, but, but this really is the best. And she uses that, she'll start with a, several cups of ketchup and brown sugar and allspice, secret ingredient, allspice, several spices. But her real, real secret ingredient was she scrubbed a lemon and then she minced that thing up, peel and all, and threw that in the sauce and simmered it. And uh, that barbecue sauce is just sensational. In terms of barbecuing, I mean, there's, there's barbecue in terms of just making the sauce, but if we t talk about grilling, um, there are lots of things that go on. I mean, we create a lot of flavors when we're cooking the food. And cooking the food over a grill really can create flavors. And I've heard people debate about, oh, you know, gas grills are absolutely fine. There are the purists that say nothing but charcoal, or you have to put the right kind of wood chips on top. And the reality is all of those things do make a difference. The fundamental is you've got heat there. And when you start heating the surface of the food, you get a browning reaction, known as the Maillard reaction. It's a reaction between amino acids and sugars. They start reacting together, and you get a brown surface. Now, the additional thing that can happen, which is something that really isn't the best to happen, is if you cook it at too high a temperature or too long, you go not just the browning reaction, but you actually start burning it and charring it. Um, that, some people love that charred flavor. And actually, from a safety standpoint, it's not really very good for you because that when you burn it, you actually do form some carcinogens on the surface of the product. So that's, that's one we, we'd like to try to stay away from. But obviously, if you're doing it over charcoal, that does impart some flavor to it because you do have some aroma compounds coming off the charcoal. You put wood chips on that, all of a sudden you've got the smoke and that smoke is going to permeate and give you flavor in your food. If you do in fact char something, you're going to form some benzopyrenes and some other undesirable compounds. There are some things you can do in terms of cooking. One of the things that causes flare-ups and will cause you to have flames and, and char things is the fat that's present. That drips down onto that hot charcoal or onto your hot gas grill and you will have flames there because the fat starts burning. There are things you can do such as with ribs. People say, well, pre-cook pre them a little bit. If you pre-boil them, you're going to get rid of a lot of that fat and dramatically reduce the incidence of those flare-ups. We have five taste receptors. Now these, we are born with these and therefore survival. You know, uh, sweet means yummy, yummy, carbohydrates, energy giving. Uh, umami means protein, again, life giving protein. Salty uh, is uh, uh, our minerals for our preservation. Our cells don't work without salt. Napoleon's army, half of them died coming back from Moscow because they didn't have enough salt in their diets to, uh, uh, for their wounds to heal. Now, bitter, literally all natural toxins are bitter. So bitter means spit it out, spit it out. And a baby uh, put something bitter on it, you see the baby doing this spitting out motion. So these are our hardwired taste receptors that we come with. Monel's 
at thinking of adding calcium and the French want to add a, a fat taste receptor. But at this split second, we only have five to deal with. Sweet, sour, salty, umami, and bitter. Bitter, thank you, thank you. Okay. Now, in our bar with our barbecue, back to our two major schools, the sweet school and the bitter school. Uh, if you're uh, having wine with sweet or anything you're having to drink or eat with a sweet, remember that bite of that sweet is going to intensify the next bite or the next sip. And if you're doing the North Carolina vinegar, uh, uh, it, it's fine. You can have anything because uh, the vinegar is, you know, going to knock it out anyhow. I kind of said we obviously cook um, because we will kill any microorganisms that are present so we don't end up with food poisoning. But from a safety standpoint, if you have like a piece of tuna, I happen to like tuna that is just barely seared on the outside. I'm not worried about any food poisoning from that because the inside of that tuna flesh is basically sterile. There are no microorganisms growing in there. The same with a piece of steak or a piece of fish, a um, piece of chicken, whatever you have. There's nothing incorporated on the inside. You only have surface contamination that you want to get rid of with the cooking. Where you do run into the issues is with something like a ground meat. You're cooking a hamburger. There, then, you have taken the surface, which could potentially be contaminated, and you've co incorporated it into the whole thing. So that's one thing to think about in terms of whether or not you can eat rare meat. And now Shirley's going to talk about what some of the impacts are of overcooking the meat. Uh, mothers, unfortunately, have instilled in their children to order everything cremated, uh, you know, uh, because so they won't have E. coli. And this is just absolutely, absolutely dangerous. You increase your chances of stomach cancer by three times if you order your meat, you know, from medium well to well done. So absolutely don't do it. Don't ever order anything. Now, we're talking about muscle. Uh, this doesn't apply to liver or anything like that. This is muscle because there's uh, creatinine in muscle that reacts with the uh, amines to give you these heterocyclic amines. But it's any muscle. And it, it comes about at temperatures over four, between four and 500 degrees. And actually, it has to be that the surface is touching something 500 degrees. So if you marinate, this is going to give you a buffer. The main thing with heterocyclic amines, uh, don't cook things beyond medium. We owe our big brains to cooking. Uh, Willard, the people at Harvard, explained that it wasn't until our ancestors began to cook the raw tubers and things like that that they got so much more nutrient out of the, them uh, that we were able to expand our brain. Our brains take some colossal amount of energy to keep going. Uh, like 25% of our energy intake just goes to our brain. And uh, we are so grateful to cooking. We'd never have made it if we hadn't had cooking. <laughs>